Sama Teacher 7, Mr. Barry here. Today I want to show you some of the odd things I've noticed about using a Chromebook. Now I'm a teacher at the adult school and I show my students how to use the Chromebook and actually how to do things such as uninstall apps, install apps, how to find their files with the Files app, how to upgrade the SSD storage by adding a SD card or other methods. And I'm going to show you some of that now in this short video here. So let's get started with the lesson. Okay, we're going to be going over the, some of the things that really frustrates people about using their Chromebook. Let's say that they want to uninstall an app. Well, right away on the desktop, you don't see any apps. It's all down here in the shelf. If you click on the launcher, you see a few apps here. Now, if you right click on one of these, let's say that you want to take one of these off, like the Doom 2. You right click it and nothing happens. Now, the amazing thing is when the apps are actually on the shelf, you can actually right click them and uninstall them from there. So that is a nice feature to have. You can also unpin them from the shelf. So let's go back to the app launcher and show you. Well, if you have an app that you want to uninstall but you don't see it here on the shelf and you don't see it anywhere there, click on this little carrot or the up arrow and this reveals more apps. Now, there are some things that you cannot uninstall within the Chrome operating system. And uh, let's just go in and say that you have one of these extra apps here, like Cut the Rope. That should be able to uninstall simply by right clicking it and saying uninstall. So there you go. It really is that easy. And so I'll try another one here. Here's TikTok. Just right click it and you have uninstall. Okay. So that's how you uninstall apps. And that, again, that frustrates people because they'll go in, they'll click on here, and they say, well, I want to uninstall this Doom 2. They right-click it, and nothing happens. You always have to click on the up arrow key, find your app in this list, then right-click it, and then simply do a normal click on uninstall. Now, for the newbies or the, the beginners, they say, well, how do you right-click on a Chromebook? It's not intuitive. Well, what you do is you put your fingers and you form a peace symbol. So you put two fingers out at the same time and you tap right on your touchpad. And when you do, it will form that right click. So there we go. You put two fingers down simultaneously creating that peace symbol and you can create a, uh, a right click that way. Uh, if you have a regular mouse, you can plug in any USB mouse into your Chromebook and you can right click and um, get to those options as well. Okay, I don't feel like I'm going to be uninstalling Microsoft Word today. So let's go in and let's look at some of the other oddities that we have here. Another thing here, here's the Files app. Now the Files app is right here on my shelf. But let's just say that you're on your Chromebook and you say, well, Mr. Barry, I don't have it on my shelf. You can always find it by simply going into your app launcher and then if you don't see it here, pinned to the shelf, you can actually go to the arrows and then find your files app down in this list. Now let's say that you have, you know, may, maybe you have hundreds of different apps. You can actually click right here and just type in the name of the app. Now I'm seeing it all over the place, but let's just say I didn't see it. So I'd type in files and it'll come up with the name files. Double click it and there it comes up. And in a moment or two, you have your Files app opened. Now, let's go ahead and show you how to work with this. Let's say that you're downloading files from the internet. Where do those files go? Well, by default, I would expect them to go into this folder right here called the Downloads folder. Many people will go in also and try, well, they say, well, maybe it's in my videos. And so they'll click here and see if it comes up there or perhaps a click on images. Now the thing about these folders is that they are read only, meaning if I right click them, I'm unable to delete them, I can't rename them, I can't do anything with those files. And that can be very, very frustrating if you find a file and you say, well, I want to delete that file. You right click it, you can't delete, you can't rename, you can't do anything with the file. You can just simply copy it. So these up here, you're not able to change. But let's say we go down here to Downloads. Now once I'm in Downloads, 
check this out. I click on downloads, I right click on one, and now I have the delete option. So you can delete uh, files by doing that. If you go into, and let's say that you watch one of my other videos, and you said, okay, let's upgrade the uh, solid state storage here or the storage on my Chromebook. So you put in a little SD card in, like I did here. Well, you can actually have it so that the files will automatically be downloaded here in your settings. And let's click on there. And there's a lot of my files and folders up here. So let's go in and let's right click one of these. Let's right click the Android here. And you notice on that Android folder, I am able to rename it. I'm able to delete it, get other information on it. So I'm able to do basically anything that I want with it. And on these up here, I am not able to. So if you're brand new to the uh, Chrome environment, you'll be clicking on images and say, well, I want to delete this image. And of course it doesn't give you that option. Why? Because you have to find that image down here in either your downloads or in your SD card. Next I want to talk about installing apps. Now there's two different stores that you can actually use. One is this Android Play Store. We'll talk about that first since I see it there. So you click it and you can type in the name of the app that you want to find. And let's say I want to find Doom. And there's many apps with the name Doom. I can install them by clicking on them and then clicking on the price. Now some of these are free. Actually the majority of these are free. And let's see, let's go into Clash of Clans. So here we have Clash of Clans and I've already installed it so I just click on open and they'll open up that app. Let's find another app here such as World of Tanks. To install it you simply click on install and then it will download and be installing this app onto your Chromebook and there we see it's actually installing now. Now once the app has downloaded and installed onto your Chromebook you can click on the open to open the app but of course you don't want to go to the Play Store and open the app every time in that way. Just go to your app launcher and click on the little up arrow and you should be able to find your new app in this list. Now I see it right now on my shelf but let's just see if I can find it down here. Let's click on Tanks. And there it is. I could click on World of Tanks and it will open up that app for me. And that was the Play Store. So let's go into the other store which is called the Google Web Store. And I'm going to click on that. Now the Web Store has a slightly different appearance than you would see in if you're using a Windows computer. For example, you notice right away it has apps games and so there's actually a lot more found if you're using your Chromebook. Let's go in and we'll do a search. Let's look for Office. Okay now it comes up you'll notice it has extensions. Now extensions are used in your browser so you see you have one here by Microsoft here but I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to go down here. You have themes but let's see. Aha! I have apps. So you have to go all the way down the list before the apps category comes up and that can be frustrating for a lot of people because they're expecting it to be just appearing right here at the top what they're looking for and you nope know, they have to scroll down and there's Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel now if you've watched my videos if you've been in my class or anything you know right away that I actually use Google Office Google Docs and Google Sheets and all that to open edit and create new Microsoft Word documents so I actually don't have to use these I do have them on my Chromebook. So let's say if you wanted to add any of these applications or themes or extensions, simply click on Add to Chrome and it'll add that application to your Google account. Let's say that you want to add one of these to your account. All you have to do is click on Add to Chrome and now it's added to your Google account. If something was to happen to this Chromebook, never fear, all you have to do is get another Chromebook, log into the same email or same Gmail account and all the apps get installed automatically for you. Okay, going back to the Chrome Web Store, you notice there's different things such as extensions, themes, apps. The list of apps just goes on and on. It's just really well stocked with apps. Um, you can sort by runs offline. So what that means is that these apps do not require an online presence or for you to be online. 
So let's say that you're using your Chromebook out in the field or out at work and there's no Wi-Fi or no internet where you're working at. Well, all you gotta do is install them while you're online. You have to do this while you're still online, maybe at home. And then once you're out in the field, you'd be able to use that app without the internet. And so I'm going to show you one of those apps that I use quite often, and that is my Google Drive. So I'm going to go over here to the Google Drive. So here I am in my Google Drive. Now, you notice right away that I have these settings. I would click on Settings, go in here to Settings, and then from here it says Offline. Now I have mine checked on, so I can create, open, edit, your recent Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides files on this device without uh, being online. So I can be, wow, offline, they call it here. And the very first time that you do this, you need to turn it on by clicking it. So again, that's in Settings. And then simply go to Offline and click right here. Once you click there, you're good to go. And you can use your Chromebook offline to edit different uh, work. It will edit Microsoft Word documents, Microsoft Word spreadsheets, and everything else for us as well. So if you already have an inventory of Microsoft Word documents or Microsoft spreadsheets, never fear. You can just bring them along on a thumb drive, plug it in, and you can actually edit those using your Chromebook while you're offline. Okay, I'm going to go in and show you another thing that really frustrates a lot of people here. So I'm going to click on Files app. And within the Files app, let's say that you have a particular file and maybe you have um, all of these movies here like I do. And whenever you click it, it turns on a particular app, maybe VLC or another app. And you don't want that to happen anymore. You don't want to open up that particular app with that file extension. So all you have to do is go up here with that file highlighted as I have mine, click on open, and then click on change default. When you click on change default, it gives you the apps that can run that type of a file. Simply click on the one that you want, and it changes the default app. So we'll do that again here change default and let's open up with the video player it's that easy to change your default app in opening up files so those are some of the things that frustrate new users to Chromebooks now I'm an adult school teacher and I teach for two different school districts I'm also the master teacher of technology for a school district so it keeps me rather busy with different schools what do I do well I teach adults how to use their Chromebooks and how to get the most out of their Chromebooks what we do is we go into the Google Drive, Google Docs, Google Sheets, learn how to do everything with those apps. We also learn about Google Photos, and we do a lot more than just the basics. We actually get into using the Chromebook on a really good level because we're there for 16 weeks in my classes. Um, I do have those classes, by the way. They're called Computer Literacy Courses. I start with very basics, and after that, I get to more and more of these skills like I've shown here. Hey, if you like these types of videos, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below because I love to read your comments. And before you give it a thumbs down because you say, well, hey, something's not working on my computer the way you've shown on the screen, don't worry, I'm always here to help. Just leave a comment down below on what it's not doing. I'll get right to it as soon as I can and show you how you can actually succeed in using your Chromebook or getting into whatever you need to do with your Chromebook. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already and enjoy my other videos on technology, Chromebooks, Windows PCs, EVs, and much more. Thank you again and bye bye. Hey, I see that you're still here. If you're interested in learning more about using your Chromebook, using computers in general, well, I do have a playlist of more than 16 videos with 16 lessons. The very first few lessons are the very basics. And if you've been using your Chromebook or using your computer, you could probably skip number one or even lesson number two and jump right into lesson number three. The link to the playlist should be appearing over here on this side. And like I said, it starts with the basics, but it goes on from there. And I've had you know, secretaries, for example, who've been using computers for more than 20 years, and even they learn a lot 
from those lessons. And over on this side, we have the subscribe button. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel. And thank you again, and bye-bye.